you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try this question out before moving on. It turns out that this question can be broken up into two different phases. In phase one of the question, we have what is called an inelastic collision. Now, an inelastic collision means that the two objects collide and stick together. And that's exactly what's happening in this problem. The bullet is colliding with the block and the two objects are sticking together. In that situation, we can use the conservation of momentum. In phase two, after the bullet has collided with the block and sent the block flying forward, we're going to see that the spring is bringing the block and the bullet to rest. And in that case, we can use the conservation of energy. Now, sometimes in physics questions, it's necessary to solve the question backwards in a sense. So we're actually gonna start with phase two of this problem. So as noted, as the spring is bringing the bullet and block to rest, we can use the conservation of energy. Now to do that effectively, what we have to understand are the types of energies present in both the initial and the final situation. Initially, the bullet and block are moving forward at a certain speed, and the spring is relaxed. And so in that case, there is kinetic energy only. There will be no spring potential energy. As the spring brings the objects to rest, the kinetic energy disappears and is converted into the spring potential energy, sometimes called the elastic potential energy. Some textbooks use the symbol UX to represent the spring potential energy. Now, because energy is conserved in this process, we can set the kinetic energy that was initially present equal to the elastic potential energy that was finally present. So that's what we're gonna do. Now, of course, it'll be helpful to replace kinetic energy with its corresponding representation and same with the elastic potential energy. Notice that one half appears on both sides of the equation so we can eliminate it. And then we can divide both sides of the equation by m in order to isolate v squared. And then finally, we can take the square root of both sides. That way we can actually solve for the speed of the bullet and block. We can now plug in the known values. The question stated k, which is the force constant, as being 200 newtons per meter. x is the distance by which the spring is compressed. And that was given to us as 13.3 centimeters. Notice that we have to convert that into meters. So when we plug that in, we need to make sure that that's 0.1 three meters. And then M was the mass of the object. Now remember, the bullet is embedded inside the block, so we have to add their masses together. The block was one kilogram and the bullet was 20 grams. So one kilogram plus 20 grams, which needs to be converted into kilograms, is going to give us 1.02 kilograms for the mass. So let's plug in all those known values. There we have it. Notice that the x, that distance that the spring compressed is being squared, and then we can process this on our calculator. And when we do so, we get approximately 1.862 meters per second. So that's how fast the bullet and the block are moving right after the collision between the bullet and the block. And then later the spring brings them to rest. Now here's the key idea. This is the initial velocity of the bullet and the block right after the collision, but it's going to become the final velocity in phase one of the question. So let's turn back to phase one. Now in phase one, we had that inelastic collision, right? We had the bullet, which was flying towards the box that was initially at rest, and then they collide together. And when they do so, they stick together, and that sends them moving uh, up against the spring. Now we just determined that the speed that they're moving up against a spring was this 1.862 meters per second. We just have to note that that's going to be the final speed after the collision. So in phase one, what, what we called the initial speed is actually going to become the final speed for that phase of the problem. So why don't we set up the equation for the conservation of momentum next? Now we can use subscripts one to represent the bullet and two to represent the box or block, I should say. And on this side, we have all the initial values, and then on this side, we're gonna have the, uh, the final values. Now, the initial speed of the block was zero because it was at rest, so we can actually take out this term right here and simplify the equation. And then, in fact, if we divide by m1, which is the mass of the bullet, we're going to be able to solve for the initial velocity of the bullet, which is exactly what we're looking for in part a. Note again that the final velocity was the 1.862 meters per second that we had found earlier, and the masses were also known, so let's plug in. And then when you simplify that on your calculator, you should get approximately 95 meters per second, so that will represent the initial speed of the bullet. So to summarize what we found so far, the initial speed of the bullet was about 95 meters per second, and then after it collided with the box, we found that the velocity, or speed, excuse me, was about 1.862 meters per second. We can use this information to calculate the 
solution to part B. It's asking what fraction of the original mechanical energy, the original mechanical energy. Well, the original mechanical energy was just the energy of the speeding bullet. Remember, the block was at rest, so it didn't have any mechanical energy. So we can actually calculate the original mechanical energy by simply finding the kinetic energy of the bullet. Now, of course, that's equal to 1 half times the mass of the bullet times its speed squared. We know the mass is 0 0.02 kilograms, and the speed we had found as 95 meters per second. We just got to make sure we square that. And so when we calculate this energy, we get approximately 90.2 joules. Now, that's the initial energy, the initial mechanical energy. We can also find the final mechanical energy if we consider the final speed of the bullet and block together. Now, at that point, the kinetic energy can be calculated in a similar way. It just turns out that with the mass, we have to add the mass of the block of wood plus the mass of the bullet. And then we can plug in their final speed that we had calculated earlier and square it. And that equals 1.77 joules. So that was the final kinetic energy. So think about that. Before the collision, there was 90.2 joules worth of mechanical energy. And then after the collision, there was 1.77 joules worth of mechanical energy. Ask yourself, how much was actually lost in the collision? Well, that's a simple matter, right? We just have to subtract 90.2 minus 1.77. And we get roughly 88.43 joules was lost in that collision. Now to find the actual fraction, we simply have to take the amount that was lost and divide it by the original amount. So let's clean up the workspace and do that. So we can call this the fraction of energy that was lost. And again, that's just gonna be how much energy was lost divided by the original amount of energy before the collision. And if we process that on our calculator, we get roughly 0.98. So about 98% of the original mechanical energy was lost in that collision. Thanks very much for taking the time to watch this video. If you liked it, please subscribe to this channel so that you can stay tuned for additional videos. Also, you're welcome to send your own question to the email address on your screen.